Welcome to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. In recent weeks, we've been focusing our coverage on COVID-19, the disease caused by SARS coronavirus 2. Because this is a novel virus, we are still learning how this disease affects the body, which raises questions for pregnant women. Joining me in the studio today to discuss COVID-19 and pregnancy is pediatric infectious disease specialist, Dr. Napuni Rajapaksi. Welcome back to the program. Great. Thank you for having me. How have you been? Good. Keeping keeping busy. Lots of lots of questions that people have been having about COVID-19. Yeah. How do you stay on top of it? So it's uh, been kind of wonderful to see the amount of new science that has come out about the disease and how quickly we're learning about it. It definitely poses some challenges to staying on top of all the new information and trying to separate all the stuff that's accurate from all the inaccurate information out there. Sure. So uh, regarding pregnancy, uh, are pregnant women more at risk of getting COVID-19? So uh, we are learning a lot about pregnant women during the course of this outbreak, Mm -hmm. um, and information is coming out almost on a daily basis about what it means for pregnancy and pregnant women. Um, In terms of uh, risk of getting the disease, we think their risk is similar to everyone else in the population and comes from exposure to people who are infected and transmitting primarily by the respiratory droplet route. So they do not seem more likely to be exposed or become infected, um, but we're still learning kind of what it means for them if they do become infected. Sure, and and if they do become infected, do we know if they become sicker than the general population or are they the same? So I think this is one of the questions that we're still trying to answer. We know Mm -hmm. that certain respiratory viruses, especially influenza, definitely can be more severe during pregnancy. And we know that pregnancy is a time of relative immune suppression, so relative Mm -hmm. weakening of your immune system. Um, And so that's why there's been particular interest in seeing uh, how pregnant women and their immune systems manage this virus. Um, Thus far, some of the early studies have been quite reassuring Mm. um, in that there have been reports of pregnant women with COVID-19 infection who have not had very severe illness um, and who have gone on to develop healthy babies at term who have not been infected themselves. And does it matter when uh, they get exposed in their pregnancy, during which trimester? Does that have any impact? So certainly this is one of the questions that we're interested in learning more about. Um, We know that any infection during pregnancy can increase your risk for things like preterm labor or going uh, into labor early. Um, And likely that is also the case with this infection. Um, And so anytime you have preterm labor, that does pose certain risks for a mom and for baby. Um, As to whether that's any different than any other infection, we don't have the information yet, but um, that's one of the things that people are concerned about. So you mentioned, obviously, the risk of prematurity. What about direct uh, risk to the fetus? Uh, Assuming mum goes to full term, do we know that information? So that's a a great question. What we know about other respiratory viruses like influenza or other coronaviruses is that they are not transmitted uh, through the placenta to the developing baby or fetus. Mm. Um, We suspect that is likely to be the case with this virus, but since it is a new one, we need to have more experience um, following these pregnancies, following these babies after delivery to know for sure. Um, There have been uh, cases of infection in newborns, um, and right now people are trying to identify whether those were transmitted after the baby was born, uh, seeing as newborns are usually in close contact uh, with the mother, um, or whether these were acquired before delivery. And so certain studies are underway to better understand that part of things. Oh, I see. Okay. So what about testing? You know, pregnant women, uh, if they're concerned, should they be all tested? How, how we, what's the messaging? So uh, pregnant women, if they are concerned that they have symptoms consistent with COVID-19, should definitely be in contact with their uh, healthcare provider or whoever is following their pregnancy. Um, They can talk with them, hear what the symptoms are, and determine uh, whether they qualify for testing, um, depending on what uh, testing availability is like in their area, and any precautions they should take both to protect themselves and protect the people around them. Mm -hmm. Um, They should definitely be in touch with their healthcare providers if they have concerns. Many areas now also have uh, COVID-19 hotlines that you can call into to get advice mm. about whether you need testing and where to go to get that done most safely, if that is the case. Yeah, no, that's that's some great advice. Obviously, we've been told that um, um, protection is, is the key from getting it. So anything you think uh, are unique to pregnant women that they should be doing to try and prevent getting COVID-19? So uh, currently, the recommendations that apply to the general public definitely apply to pregnant women as well. So those are recommendations around social or physical uh, distancing, Um, avoiding traveling outside of your home unless it's really needed for essential reasons, essential reasons, including things like uh, seeking medical care, picking up medications from a pharmacy, 
uh, getting essential groceries, those types of activities. Um, pregnant women are unique in that uh, they will have uh, prenatal appointments uh, that are arranged for them, and mm -hmm. many areas are now offering those through telehealth or by telephone to avoid them having to go into a hospital where their risk of being exposed to someone that's infected might be higher. So taking advantage of as many of those types of services as possible will really be in their, their best interest. Certainly keeping up with your prenatal visits is extremely important mm -hmm. for a healthy pregnancy, and so we would uh, recommend that they continue uh, to work with their providers to figure out the safest way to make sure that those still happen. Um, otherwise, all of the, the common things like hand washing, avoiding people who are ill, trying to stay at least six feet away from, from others will really uh, dramatically decrease your risk of being exposed. Um, those are recommended for everyone, regardless of um, whether they're feeling well or not. Sure. Um, we do know with this virus that it does seem to be able to be transmitted even before someone develops symptoms. And so keeping that radius of uh, safety around yourself will really protect you from, from exposure. Okay. And we've also uh, been seeing now with uh, pregnant women when it comes to delivery, be doing it on their own and not with their partners or maybe doing it at home. What, what are your thoughts uh, about that? So uh, definitely the safest place uh, for a pregnant woman to deliver is in the presence of a healthcare provider that can uh, provide emergency services if, if necessary for them. Different hospitals and health systems are putting restrictions in place uh, to try and protect pregnant women and other families that are on the unit um, in terms of how many people you can have mm -hmm. uh, with you. Uh, many places I know are allowing at least one other person to be with you during uh, labor and delivery. Um, but it's important to understand kind of what has been put in place at the place that you're planning to deliver so that you can make the appropriate uh, plan. Really, when restrictions are being put in place, they're really uh, to protect moms, newborns, and other people who are on the unit. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is um, a lot of uh, pregnant women have children at home. And uh, any sort of top tips there about how they should interact with their children, obviously with the, the worry of transmission? So uh, most areas uh, now or many areas, schools have been closed. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason for that is to try and prevent uh, young children from uh, becoming infected and uh, interrupting kind of the role that they may play in spread of infection. Um, definitely with young children, it can be hard to practice things like social distancing, <laughs> um, but practical things like encouraging them to wash their hands frequently uh, definitely goes, goes a long way. Um, pregnant women should be especially careful when they're taking care of young children, changing diapers, um, especially if the child is sick, mm. uh, to ensure that they themselves are washing their hands well um, and uh, taking care to wipe down high-touch surfaces or things that kids might be touching frequently in order to reduce that risk of transmission. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we think of it about being spread through the airborne, but obviously changing diapers, that's part and parcel of being a parent. So you do that exactly. without even thinking. Yeah. And, and what about transmission through uh, breast milk? Has, has there been any information about that? Yeah, so that's a great question. Currently, the CDC and World Health Organizations are recommending that uh, uh, women can breastfeed, mm. uh, even if they have COVID-19 infection. Some early studies that have tested breast milk uh, have not found presence of the virus uh, okay. in the breast milk, which is promising sure. um, initial data. And we know that there's so many health benefits, uh, including immune benefits uh, for newborns and babies who get fed with breast milk. So based on the information we have currently, we think the benefits of breast milk outweigh any theoretical risk of, of transmission. Um, risk of transmission, though, uh, is higher when you're in close contact. And obviously, breastfeeding means mom and baby will be in very close contact. And so there are certainly things that can be done to reduce risks of transmission if the mom is infected, um, including making sure to wash your hands well before and after breastfeeding and uh, wearing a mask if you are uh, mm. symptomatic while breastfeeding. Um, other options are if you want to express uh, breast milk and have a a caregiver who's well feed that to the baby that is another way that you could reduce uh, the risk of close contact while still providing the benefits of breast milk to the newborn so breast is still best as it comes to feeding the baby yes yeah. okay great what have, what have we learned from uh, uh, places like china and italy and europe uh, in terms of uh, risk of uh, covid19 to pregnancy that we didn't talk about anything um um, I think the, the primary things that we have uh, been hearing about from other places uh, really center around the risk of transmission from mom 
to baby. I think mm-hmm. there are some pieces that we're still working to sort out, but the kind of reassuring news has been many of the newborns who have tested positive after a birth really mm-hmm. have gone on to do very well. Oh, wow. Great. The few cases that have uh, had difficulties tend to be uh, babies who were born prematurely, mm-hmm. whether due to COVID-19 or another reason that they came early. Um, We know that those babies tend to have more difficulties, especially with their lungs um, being underdeveloped. And so it's uh, difficult to know right now how Mm. much of their illness is due to COVID-19 versus um, just underlying issues related to their prematurity. So I think that's a group that we're also going to be learning more about going forward. Well, thank you for sharing that really important information with with us. We've been talking today with pediatric infectious disease specialist, Dr. Napuni Rajapaksi. Thanks, Dr. Rajapaksi, for joining us today. Thanks for having me.